For over 20 years, Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto series has been taking us to the mean streets of organized crime, mayhem, and of course, stealing cars. Being as it's one of our most suggested videos ever, we here at Suggestive Gaming figured it would be a good idea to take a look back at the story of the various universes the Grand Theft Auto series has visited. Given that we have so much to cover, we're going to split this video into two parts. Today, we're going to cover the 3D universe, consisting of all the titles after Grand Theft Auto 2, but before Grand Theft Auto 4. Then, in part two, we'll cover the rest. Now, without further ado, this is what you need to know about Grand Theft Auto, part one. Our story begins in Vice City in the year 1984, where we meet U.S. Army Corporal Victor Vance, working to provide for his brothers, Pete, who suffers from asthma, and Lance, who is a lazy underachiever. Vic's supervisor, Sergeant Jerry Martinez, works on the side smuggling drugs, and uses his influence with Vic to recruit him into the business, which Vic morally objects to but reluctantly joins. Through the drug business, Vic meets Phil Cassidy, a self-proclaimed war veteran and manic arms dealer. After a drug deal gone wrong, Martinez grows frustrated with Vic and sends him to retrieve a girl named Mary from a party nearby. After returning with her, Vic is met by a master sergeant who confronts him about a stash of marijuana found under his bed, as well as the woman he has brought back to the base, who is revealed to be a prostitute. Set up by Martinez, these events cause Vic to be dishonorably discharged from the army and thrown out onto the streets. Shortly after, Vic once again hears from Phil, who offers him some work and a place to stay. After some jobs together, Phil introduces Vic to his brother-in-law, Marty J. Williams, who runs the Trailer Park Mafia, a small crime ring. After witnessing Marty's abusive behavior towards his wife, Louise, Vic develops a relationship with her, sending Marty into a jealous rage. Marty kidnaps his wife, but Vic is able to track them down and kill Marty, taking over the Trailer Park Mafia in turn, which he renames the Vance Crime Family. After hearing the news, Vic's brother Lance flies into the city and quickly begins working to eliminate and overtake the competing crime organizations. During this endeavor, Vic and Lance discover that a local drug dealer, Brian Forbes, is actually an undercover DEA agent who runs away with their money. They are able to catch and capture him, but after he leads them into several traps and an attempted escape, Vic is forced to kill him. Later, the Vance brothers attempt to steal a drug shipment believed to be under Martinez's supervision, but are kidnapped by Armando and Diego Mendez, two brothers in charge of a powerful cartel that actually owned the shipment. Lance lies and convinces them that it was Martinez, actually a DEA agent, that stole the drugs. To provide proof, Vic takes photos of Martinez with a DEA agent and combines Forbes' files with Martinez's. Now having their trust, the Mendez brothers give Vic and Lance some work, including jobs for filmmaker Rennie Vasselmeyer, manager Barry Micklethwaite, and even pop star Phil Collins. Through Rennie, Vic meets Ricardo Diaz, drug baron and competitor to the Mendez brothers. After Martinez tips off the Mendez cartel of this betrayal, Lance and Vic are kidnapped and narrowly escape from captivity before planning their revenge. With Diaz's help, Vic destroys the Mendez's safe, eliminating their bankroll and sending them into bankruptcy. As revenge, the Mendez cartel kidnap Luis. Lance is also captured and Vic is forced to go to their mansion where he fights and eventually kills Armando. He's able to find Lance and Luis, but Luis dies from the beating she was given. Diaz once again helps Vic track Diego and Martinez, and after stealing a chopper from his former station, he storms the Mendez's fortress and lands on the roof to face Martinez and Diego, and after another battle, Vic is able to kill them. Shortly after, Lance arrives to retrieve Vic, and the brothers agree to stay out of the drug business before leaving Vice City to return to Pete with money for his asthma medication. Two years later, in 1986, Tommy Versetti is released from prison after a 15-year sentence in Liberty City. Tommy, who was sentenced for life, was sprung after his boss Sonny Ferrelli pulled some favors. Impressed by his loyalty throughout his sentence, Sonny entrusts Tommy with expanding their drug trade to Vice City. Once he arrives in the city, Tommy and his bodyguards are met by Ken Rosenberg, a crooked lawyer who is tasked with driving them to the docks to perform a cocaine deal with the Vance brothers, now back in the drug business. Once they arrive at the docks, however, the deal is ambushed and Victor is killed along with Tommy's bodyguards. The drugs and money are stolen as well. Tommy and Rosenberg are able to escape and Tommy informs Sonny of the failed deal. Sonny, upset with Tommy, threatens him but ultimately gives him a chance to correct the situation. Rosenberg then introduces Tommy to a retired colonel, Juan Cortez, who helps set up the deal. Feeling sympathy, Cortez agrees to help Tommy, and through Cortez, he meets several figures in the Vice City drug trade, namely Ricardo Diaz, the largest kingpin. Tommy eventually finds Leo Teal, one of the hired arms involved in the ambush, and kills him after a confrontation. Lance Vance, who also survived the ambush, then confronts Tommy, but the two reach a common ground and form an alliance to get their money and drugs back. After Lance and Tommy watch over a deal between Diaz's gang and the Cubans, they are ambushed by a group of Haitians trying to intercept the deal. After Lance and Tommy thwart their attempt, they gain Diaz's trust, who hires them on for permanent protection. 
During their work, however, Lance discovers that it was in fact Diaz who set up the ambush and stole their drugs. Tommy decides that the pair should work to further gain Diaz's trust before they strike, but Lance, too eager to avenge his brother's death, attempts to kill him on his own. He fails, however, and is captured by Diaz's men. Tommy races to rescue Lance, and with their cover now blown, the two drive to Diaz's mansion where they engage in a standoff with his men. After defeating all of them, the pair finally confront and kill Ricardo Diaz, taking over his business in the aftermath. Tommy then works to control more areas of the Vice City crime underbelly, building up his crime empire to even higher levels. Sonny catches wind of this and becomes enraged at Tommy going independent and betraying him, and he sends some of his men to collect from Tommy's assets, but Tommy kills them and decides to leave the family. After counterfeiting some money to give to Sonny to get him off his back, Tommy waits at his mansion where Sonny arrives. Tommy attempts to give him the money, but Sonny reveals that it was he who actually set up Tommy to get arrested 15 years prior. Lance also reveals that he was the one who tipped Sonny off after feeling underappreciated by Tommy. Tommy chases Lance and kills him for his betrayal, then fights his way through Sonny's men, eventually killing him once and for all. In the wake of the violence, a shocked Rosenberg arrives, and Tommy appoints him his right-hand man, and the two prepare to rule Vice City unopposed. Six years later, in 1992, Carl C.J. Johnson receives a phone call in Liberty City from his brother and former gang member Sean, also known as Sweet. Sweet, the leader of the Grove Street Families gang, was the victim of an attempted drive-by assassination by a rival gang, the Ballas. However, the assassination failed, and instead of hitting Sweet, they hit their mother Beverly instead, mortally wounding her. Carl flies back to Los Santos, his hometown in the west coast state of San Andreas, and takes a taxi back to his mother's house. However, on the way, he is arrested by officers Frank Tenpenny, Eddie Pulaski, and Jimmy Hernandez of a corrupt gang-stomping police unit. Tenpenny informs Carl of the murder of another officer, Ralph Pendlebury, and threatens to frame him with the murder weapon if he doesn't cooperate with them when they need him. After being released by Tenpenny, CJ makes his way to his mother's funeral to reunite with Sweet and their sister Kendall. After a heated discussion about CJ abandoning Los Santos and the gang, CJ agrees to stay and help rebuild the Grove Street families and get their revenge on the Ballas. The Johnson brothers, along with their friends and gangmates Big Smoke, Ryder, and OG Loke, work to reunite the gang and reclaim their turf from their rivals. CJ also meets with Kendall's boyfriend Cesar V. El Pondo, leader of the Hispanic gang Varios Las Aztecas, and despite CJ and Sweet's initial disapproval, the two become friends and allies. Throughout CJ's work to rebuild the families, Tenpenny frequently reappears to task CJ with various corrupt activities on behalf of the police. After building up Grove Street, Sweet plans a final battle with the Ballas. Before the fight, CJ is contacted by Caesar, and the two see Tenpenny and the Ballas working to hide the car used in his mother's death. To CJ's surprise, also helping them are Big Smoke and Ryder, who sold out to the Ballas and Tenpenny and arranged the shooting. Before CJ can warn Sweet, however, the Ballas ambush him and leave him incapacitated. Shortly after, Tenpenny arrives and arrests the Johnson brothers. With the Grove Street family's leadership dismantled, Big Smoke, Ryder, and the Ballas take over Los Santos, under Tenpenny's supervision and protection, flooding it with crack. Still seeing some use in CJ, Tenpenny releases him and takes him to Whetstone County, warning him not to seek vengeance on his former gangmates, or else Sweet will suffer the consequences in prison. While working for Tenpenny, CJ meets a new cast of characters, including a hippie marijuana grower named The Truth, a triad leader named Woozy Moo, and Caesar's cousin Catalina, who CJ commits several small-scale heists with. After CJ beats Catalina's new boyfriend Claude in a street race, he obtains a deed to a garage in San Fierro. Upset about the loss, Claude and Catalina leave San Andreas to make their way to Liberty City. After Carl and the Truth are forced to torch his marijuana field after the police find it, they take the remaining crop to CJ's new garage. To CJ's disdain, the garage is actually in need of several repairs, and with Kendall's help, the three are able to rebuild it into an operating chop shop. While in San Fierro, CJ and Caesar discover that Ryder is working with the Loco Syndicate, the crime organization providing the Ballas with their drugs. CJ infiltrates the organization to gain their trust before killing their leaders along with Ryder with the help of Caesar and Woozy. After destroying the Loco's crack factory with a car bomb, CJ receives a call from an unknown caller informing him to meet at his ranch for information on Sweet. CJ meets the caller to find that it is Mike Terreno, an undercover government agent who was posing as one of the leaders of the Loco Syndicate, whom CJ mistakenly thought he killed. Terreno informs CJ that Sweet is safe in a prison upstate, and reveals to CJ that the officer killed when CJ arrived in San Andreas, Ralph Pendlebury, was actually murdered at the hands of Tenpenny. He also tells CJ that if he helps him, he will see that Sweet is released from prison. Shortly after, CJ gets a call from Woozy, who informs him that he now owns a casino in Las Venturas, which CJ goes to visit. 
There, Woozy enlists him to help rob a rival casino, Caligula's, which is run by the Italian mob. Once again planning to infiltrate, CJ gains the trust of mob boss Salvatore Leone while he and Woozy plan the robbery. After an elaborate setup and execution, CJ and Woozy successfully rob Caligula's, putting it out of business and sending Salvatore back to Liberty City. During this time, CJ also meets a rapper named Mad Dog, after he steals a book of his rhymes for OG Loke. After this, Mad Dog resorts to an attempted suicide, which CJ saves him from, sparking a friendship and business partnership between the two. Meanwhile, Tenpenny discovers that Hernandez had turned on them and gone informant, and he tasks his other officer, Pulaski, with killing him along with CJ to prevent Tenpenny's arrest. During a meeting with CJ, Tenpenny attacks Hernandez with a shovel, knocking him out before leaving Pulaski with the two. Pulaski tells CJ to dig his own grave, but meanwhile Hernandez regains consciousness and attacks Pulaski, but he's able to resist and shoot Hernandez, killing him. Pulaski then tries to run, but CJ gives chase, catches him, and kills him once and for all. Torreno then asks for one final favor from CJ, and afterwards he sticks to his word and releases Sweet. Sweet is not happy with CJ forgetting about Grove Street, however, and the two fight to take back their territory to re-establish the families. Afterwards, Tenpenny is arrested and tried for his crimes, but all charges are ultimately dropped due to lack of evidence. This prompts unrest and eventually full-out riots in the city. CJ helps Caesar regain his gang's territory, and now at full strength, they follow a tip Sweet received to Big Smoke's whereabouts at a crack house in the city. There, CJ fights to the top floor of the building, where he confronts and eventually engages Smoke in a gunfight. Afterwards, Smoke confesses his betrayal and his motivation for power and money before succumbing to his wounds and dying. Suddenly, Tenpenny arrives and steals Smoke's money with the intention of using it to flee from San Andreas. He escapes in a fire truck, but CJ and Sweet follow him and eventually run him off a bridge onto the center of Grove Street. There, Tenpenny exits the truck and claims he finally cleaned up the streets before dying from his injuries. Afterwards, CJ, Sweet, Caesar, and Kendall meet at the Johnson household to celebrate their victory and discuss their futures. Shortly after, Mad Dog arrives with his new lawyer, Ken Rosenberg, and displays his gold record. Outside, the riots end in Los Santos due to Tenpenny's death, and justice is finally fulfilled in San Andreas. Two years later, in 1998, we once again find Salvatore Leone running the mob, now back in Liberty City. His employee, Tony Cipriani, arrives from Italy, where he was forced to flee to after an assassination ordered by Sal. Tony is introduced to another member of the family, Vinny Chili, who rose up the ranks during his absence. Vinny is assigned to get Tony set up with an apartment and a job, but Tony soon realizes that Vinny set up the job to get Tony caught by the police. Vinny later apologizes for this and asks him to meet up with him. This turns out to be another trap, however, as Vinny hopes to get Tony's place in the Leone family. Tony thwarts the ambush and kills Vinny, returning to work for Sal. Sal tasks Tony with killing the mayor, who is planning on taking him down. Tony does this and becomes a made man in the Leone family. Tony then begins working with Donald Love, a new mayoral candidate that the Leones have in their pocket. Love loses, however, due to his obvious ties to the mob. Shortly after, Pauly Sindico, leader of a rival family, has the new mayor, Mike O'Donovan, arrest Sal, leading Tony to kill Pauly. Sal is released on bail, and he and Tony realize that Massimo Torini, a high-ranking member of the Sicilian Mafia, was orchestrating a war between the various crime families. Tony and Sal also find out that Torini has kidnapped the new mayor to ensure he doesn't drop the charges on Sal. Sal and Tony head to Torini and kill him, rescuing the mayor and putting him in the Leone's debt. Sal demands protection from the new mayor, who reluctantly agrees thanks to some intimidation from Tony. Afterwards, we see Sal's uncle, who is revealed to be behind Torino's attempt to take over Liberty City. However, he admits defeat and leaves to return to Sicily in peace, leaving Salvatore with simply a warning that every dog has his day. Two years later, at the turn of the new millennium, we find a small-time criminal named Mike, working with his partner Vinny for the Mafia to gain funds to leave Liberty City. Just before they gain enough money to leave, however, Vinny is killed in a car bomb explosion, burning up with all of their cash. Mike decides to stay in the city and enact revenge, and sets out to find who killed his partner. Mike starts with local explosion maker 8-Ball, who eventually leads him to a criminally connected bartender named Johnny. After doing a couple jobs for Johnny, Mike returns to his bar to find him gunned down. Mike follows the assailants, members of the Uptown Yardies gang, to Staunton Island. There, Mike finds the Yardies leader, King Courtney, who denies any involvement in the shooting, instead claiming that he has an interest in the actual perpetrators since Johnny owed them money. Courtney tells Mike that the mastermind behind everything is Colombian cartel leader Cisco. However, when Mike confronts Cisco, it becomes quickly apparent that Courtney was simply using him. 
Cisco promises to find out who is actually behind everything, and Mike works for him before catching the attention of Asuka Kasen of the Yakuza, who sends Mike to rescue her niece Yuma, who was actually kidnapped by Mike unbeknownst to her during his work for Cisco. After returning, Asuka vows to help Mike as well, leading him to work for the two rival gangs simultaneously. Eventually, however, Mike finds that Cisco has been assassinated, and he gives chase to the escaping killer. Mike runs the assailant's car off the road, and to his surprise, the person who exits it is none other than Vinny, still very much alive. Vinny reveals that he staged his own death in order to take his share of their money, but ended up following him around the city afterwards to ensure he never learned the truth. A shootout with Mike, Vinny, and his bodyguards ensues, but Mike emerges victorious. Vinny pleads for his life and warns Mike that by killing him and taking the money, he'll become a target of every criminal in the city. Mike ignores this warning, however, and kills Vinny once and for all. Mike then meets back up with 8-Ball, but shortly after the Colombians arrive, presuming Mike had killed Cisco. Mike fends them off, but the police arrive and arrest 8-Ball. Mike is able to escape and finds Cisco's successor, informing him of the truth behind his predecessor's death. Mike is then informed that King Courtney had called out a hit on Mike to get his money. Mike, with help from Asuka and the Yakuza, is able to make his way to the Yardie's hideout and kill Courtney. The police arrive once again, but Mike is able to escape to Cisco's plane, where he departs from Liberty City, finally fulfilling his goal. A year later, in 2001, we finally see Claude and Catalina once again, robbing a bank in Liberty City. After the robbery, however, Catalina turns on Claude, stating that she doesn't need him anymore. She shoots Claude and their other partner, then leaves with Miguel, their getaway driver. Claude survives the gunshot and is arrested, but later, while he is being transported in a police convoy, the Colombian cartel blows up the bridge they're traveling on. The cartel kidnap an old Asian gentleman from the convoy before leaving. Claude, along with fellow inmate 8-Ball, are able to escape captivity during the commotion. 8-Ball introduces Claude to the Leone family, including Salvatore and Tony. Claude works to help the Mafia fight the Colombians, now led by Catalina and Miguel, but is eventually double-crossed by Sal who attempts to kill him before he is informed at the last second by Sal's wife, Maria. Claude meets with Maria, who informs him that she told Sal they were having an affair in an attempt to make him jealous. She introduces him to her friend, Asuka Kassin. To gain the Yakuza's trust, Claude is tasked with assassinating Sal. Claude succeeds in killing Sal, sparking a rivalry with the remaining Leone crime family. With his new connections, he meets Asuka's brother Kenji and a crooked cop named Ray Machowski. Ray introduces Claude to Donald Love, now a billionaire real estate and media mogul, and Claude begins to work for him. Claude rescues the old Asian gentleman the Colombian cartel kidnapped earlier and were holding for ransom, and returns him to Love. Later, Love has Claude spark a gang war between the cartel and the Yakuza in order to lower the real estate value of the city. He does this by running over Kenji with a cartel car, killing him and enraging Asuka. Claude later finds Catalina and Miguel at the cartel's construction site, and Miguel hands over a package for Love after feeling cornered. Catalina shoots Miguel in the back and escapes before Asuka arrives. Still believing the cartel are responsible for her brother's death, she begins to torture Miguel for information as Claude leaves to deliver the package to Love. After providing a distraction for him, Claude returns to Love's penthouse to discover that he and the elderly Asian man have disappeared, seemingly leaving Liberty City for good. Claude returns to the construction site to find Asuka and Miguel dead, with a note from Catalina stating she has kidnapped Maria for a ransom that Claude must deliver to the cartel's mansion. Upon arriving at the mansion, however, Claude is ambushed and Catalina takes Maria in a helicopter to the nearby dam. Claude survives the ambush and follows them there, shooting down the helicopter and finally killing Catalina. Claude leaves the dam with Maria, and after the screen fades, the last thing we hear is a gunshot, silencing Maria and finally bringing a sudden end to our story. This is where we leave the GTA 3D universe, as we look forward to a new generation of gaming and Grand Theft Auto. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching, and remember, we have a part two coming soon, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube will actually show it to you when we put it out. I'll also be streaming all of my playthroughs of the remaining games so you can join in and get involved. Also, make sure you leave a like on this video and leave a comment letting us know what other video game storylines you'd like to see us cover. We also have all kinds of social media that you can find links to in the description. We'll see you next time.